Okay, we ever tell you a good one from the UK integration B. This was sample problem number six. We have the integral from zero to one of natural log one minus x over x dx. Okay, this is one I did previously and I just wanted to do an alternative method on this one. What I wanna do is just kind of transform it to start with doing a u substitution on the numerator. So what we'll do is set u equal to natural log one minus x. And then what I want to do is solve for x. So kind of rearranging this with log properties, we can say that e to the u is the same thing as 1 minus x, so that x is going to be 1 minus e to the u. Then I can take a derivative here to get our dx value. Derivative of 1, 0. Derivative here, this is just going to become minus e to the u du. So then let's go ahead and substitute this and update everything. So first, plugging in 1. Where am I plugging in one? Plug in one right there. So when you do that, then you're gonna have natural log of zero. That's gonna be minus infinity. Then you take a zero and you plug it in here, you have natural log of one. That's just gonna be zero for the lower bound. Then rewriting everything, our numerator is gonna be just a u. X is gonna be this. We have u over one minus e to the u. And then for dx, we'll use this, minus eu du. But then let's take this minus sign out front and use it to swap the bounds around. And now at this point, this is fairly similar to another problem from the same integration. I can't remember if it was number five or seven or what, but it was like this basic setup. What we did in that other video was I multiplied in. You can see if we multiplied in by e minus u over e minus u, it's kind of nice because it gets rid of this e to the u, but it doesn't work the same here because we're going, our bounds are going from the bounds go to minus infinity. I think in the other one, they're going to infinity. But still, I'm going to do something similar to that other video. And what we did was we used this thing, which can be written in terms of the series, which is our geometric series formula. So we have this from n equals 0 to infinity. And this thing is x to the n. And we just have the restriction on this that for this to converge, we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. So all we're doing here, we're not worried about the numerator. We're just kind of like we have a one and we're just kind of focused on this right here. Noticing the similar between this and this, we just need to input this down here. If we have this now, we can express this same bounds on this, but then plugging in e to the u here, we have e to the u distributing the n. I'll write this as e to the n u. And then our condition here for convergence is the absolute value of e to the u needs to be less than one. Now the absolute value doesn't matter here because the exponential is always positive, but you can see why I didn't want to multiply in the e to the minus u here because all of our u values are between zero and minus infinity. If we had this as a minus u here, we wouldn't have the convergence, but with all negative values here, negative exponents here, this is always gonna be less than one, so this condition is true, and so we can use this right here. So we'll take this and plug it back into our integral and continue from there. Okay, so now that we have this rewritten in this form, we haven't dealt yet with our numerator, which we have right here. All I want to do is distribute this inside the sum here. So I can do this and rewrite it, still having the same bounds. Now we'll bring in the u, but then here we have the same base. So I can put those two together and write this as e to the n plus one times u du. And now at this point, what I want to do is I really want to integrate this, but we still have the sum inside the integral. So what I need to do is I need to swap this I need to swap the sum with the integral. At this point, maybe it's not clear why it's justified, but later on, but later on, we're gonna see that the series we have is absolutely convergent, and that's gonna justify this later on. So for now, we'll just make the swap and pray. So here we go. We have the sum on the outside now, and then we'll just integrate this. And this integral here is actually not too bad. We can just use integration by parts on this. I'll use the DI method or tabular integration over here to the right just differentiating the u because the derivative because this is going to differentiate the zero so that's going to be nice and we're not going to have any problem integrating this thing so derivative derivative of u is just going to be one doing it again the second one's just going to be zero integral here we're going to get back the same thing but then we're going to have this n plus one in the denominator do it again we're going to have basically the same thing but we're going to have another copy of n plus one come out so now we have n plus one squared here so then for the integral, we're going to have our solution here on the diagonals. The last row will be an integral, but we have a zero, so that's going to zero that out. So we just need to copy this stuff down. We still have our summation on the outside. 
Now what I can do here is factor out this e to the n plus one times u. So we'll factor this in front. And then what's left, it's gonna be u over n plus one minus, then just the other one's gonna be one over n plus one squared. And we need to evaluate this from our bounds minus infinity to zero. So first, evaluating this at zero, well, this is gonna become e to the zero. So the first part's just gonna be a one in front here. Then when you plug zero in here, that's just zero minus, and this is just like a constant, so this is gonna be one over n plus one squared. And then for the second part, we need to plug in minus infinity. But when we have the exponential, when u is going to minus infinity, n needs to be positive, but n is positive because we're starting at zero, or it's positive, you know, when you add one to it. So this first piece is going to zero, and it's really gonna overpower, because we do have, I mean, this is going to minus infinity right here, but the exponential is gonna be much stronger, and so that means that all of this is going to zero. But cleaning this up, this is just a zero, this is just a zero, so we just need to evaluate this sum of minus one over n plus one squared, and then we can finish it off. Okay, so we're almost done, but to simplify this, what I wanna do is, let's just do an index change. What I wanna do is subtract a one on the end here, and to do that, I just need to add a one right here. So this thing, so then our bound here is gonna be just n equals one. So let me just rewrite that. And then with this minus sign, I can actually pull this out front. So we'll just have the minus, we'll just have the minus sign up front of the sum. And then subtracting one here, right? This is just a zero. So this whole thing just becomes one over n squared. But this here, this is a really well-known sum. This is actually the Basel problem. And we know the value of this to be pi squared over six. So putting it all together, for my final solution to this, we just have minus pi squared over six. Okay, there you have it. Good integral from MIT. No, there you have it. Good problem from UK sample number six. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.